right, back at it here, working in the uh, cabin area, working on the control stick, getting all this stuff all lined up. One thing I will mention uh, for you, for those of you who are powder coating your steel components, know that you're going to add about a mil or two of thickness to that. And when you get to uh, trying to get all that stuff to fit up into the bushings and the collars and all that stuff, you're going to have some uh, things you're going to have to trim down. Uh, one of the things I had to do right here in the middle, doesn't look real pretty right now because we're still fitting it, but I had to remove the material from uh, around where the actual Y stick mounted because it was just too snug. It was rubbing even with the bolt loose, so we had to trim that out a little bit. We'll get it sanded down and just paint that area just to keep it protected. And then back here, we're going to basically uh, take some material off that bushing to fit it to the size of the uh, control arm. In the back here, uh, one of the things I want to do to beef up the strength, obviously, is get these side armrests installed. But before you do that, it's much easier to get the control linkages in here because you don't want to have to be going in that small hole to try and get all the bolts on there. You may have to do it later to adjust things, but at least if the majority of the work is done now, uh, then you won't have to deal with that later. And what I did to keep the... Uh, control arms situated here is I just put a uh, put a zip tie through the end of the uh, control rod and then I just put a little mixing stick in here to hold that let's see if I can get you a shot from the inside here right there just got a zip tie through there holding that up out of the way so we don't scratch it or anything so I'm gonna do that on both sides I'm gonna get the horizontal uh, rods in there as well Get everything bushened up, tightened down, all that good stuff, and then I'll rivet in the sides, which will give us uh, the, the extra strength that we need since we've got our engine mounted up on the front here. Uh, got the sensors ordered up today for the Viking engine. Uh, there's about six or seven sensors that you need for the various things, gearbox, temp, inlet and outlet of the uh, intercooler, pressure, all that good stuff. I'm going to put a link on the Zenith Super Duty Builders Group uh, page of all the part numbers you need because that was something I was looking for you know if you're using a Dynon system uh, what parts and pieces do you need to make up the sensors that are needed if you're not buying the uh, the Viking view so that's where we're at guys uh, we're gonna keep working at it today and uh, we'll give you some more updates all right guys well I had to clean up the uh, powder coating off of the end of the control rod here so that I could slip this piece over, which is still fairly snug, uh, it goes on one way better than the other. There it is. So that slips on there. Clean up the inside a little bit, and then uh, located the bolt and washer. And then we're going to have a little bushing on here. This is the aileron stop bushing. So once this is all together, and the control arm and control stick is on there, this little bushing will be the part that hits the stop. So once this is on there, this will actually swivel back and forth and hit the stops. So I figured, well, I might as well just take this little bushing off. I cleaned it up and I'm just gonna prime it real quick just to throw a little paint on the outside. It'll probably get scratched up anyways, but might as well throw some protection on it. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Then I'm gonna take the rear um, nylon bushing out for the control arm insert the control arm and put the nylon bushing back around it and see if we can get this together so that's what we're working on i want to show you guys one thing here on these uh, control rod ends you'll see that there's a little hole right here it's called the witness hole i'm going to try and get the light to shine through there and uh, you can see the light shining through there now there are some areas where safety wire goes on control cables and things like that but the witness hole on a control link is not made for putting wire through it. It's actually made to make sure that you have enough rod inserted and you do that by simply turning and you can see that the light is going away. You now know that you have enough threads to adequately hold this control rod end on and that's what the locking nut does is backs that up and then after your adjustments made locks that down. So just a tip there the witness hole on these hard control rod arms is actually to make sure you have enough thread shining through and you can check that by either shining a light in there or running something like a safety wire in just to check to make sure it's not open 
because if it's open then there's a potential that you may not have enough rod sticking into the control arm and then therefore you'll need to uh, spin that in there so just a little tip guys All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up for now. We got a uh, Zenith homecoming to get to. So I did work on the control stick and control tubes quite a bit. Got everything uh, all linked up inside the back here, uh, minus the actual torque tube, which I'm working on. That's the final part. But I did get all the turnbuckles, bolts, hardware, all that's installed. Got my side plates back in, uh, installed to beef up that side because, of course, we got an engine hanging on here now. I am missing a small stainless steel washer that goes right here. I'm going to have to pick one up at Zenith to finish this up. It goes right behind this collar here, that bushing. Um, but other than that, we're moving right along. Uh, she's starting to take shape. Got the horizontal back up there to start fitting things up. Engines mounted up. Nose gears on. And she's starting to look like an airplane sitting here in the shop. So. Hope to see you guys at the Zenith Homecoming this Thursday. Well, it's, I guess it's uh, Friday and Saturday, but a lot of us will be getting there Thursday. Uh, looking forward to meeting and putting some names and faces together finally. So, uh, thanks guys. Hey guys, Adam here in the AeroWorks Workshop. And there's not a lot of times that I really talk about an awesome product, but I'm gonna do that today because the guys at Arrow Creeper. Uh, got me one of these creepers for the shop here. I've been looking at all kinds of different options, stools and regular creepers, but it wasn't until I found the arrow creeper on their site after doing some searching that I found a solution that allows you to go completely on the floor, but then also be able to lift it in a bunch of different angles. And I'm going to show you that right now. So this will go all the way to the floor like a standard creeper and it will come all the way up into a bunch of different seating positions. This is super awesome if you're working on landing gear, if you're working on the belly of the aircraft, the tail of the aircraft, you can get into the hell hole as we call it. Uh, they also have uh, a tool tray, they've got a cup holder, um, lots of different options you can do to this, comes fully assembled. So all I did was open the box, take a couple bubble wrap off and I was ready to go. So if you guys are in the market for a tool like this for the workshop, a creeper for your shop to get in and around your airplane, whether you're painting it or working on it, what have you, definitely check out the Aero Creeper. I'll put a link in the description down below and uh, let them know that AeroWorks sent you and uh, hopefully it'll work out as great as it's working out for me. Well, that's it for me, guys. Uh, I'm going to wrap this episode up. I've got the Zenith Homecoming to get ready for. Going to be blasting off tomorrow afternoon, and uh, we'll be there Friday and Saturday down in Mexico, Missouri for the 2021 Zenith Homecoming. Hope to meet a lot of you guys that I chat with on Facebook and the YouTube channel, and uh, hopefully next year we'll be taking this to the Zenith Homecoming by flying it there. So this year we got to drive, but we're looking forward to meeting everybody. So until next time, guys, Adam with AeroWorks, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.